All right, P3-40 is, uh, is another sheet metal tab piece. Always had a few issues with either the 83 dimension or the 20 and the 20. Uh, so we're going to build this out and try to find a combination. The other thing is this, uh, this notch is shown as being parallel to the top plane. That's going to create some problems unless we have... Um, uh, a multi-axis, uh, something that can twist, um, you know, the laser or the um, uh, the plasma can tilt the head and, and make that cut when it's in the flat pattern. So we'll um, we'll put that geometry in as a uh, as a normal and uh, normal to the face, so it angles back. And um, if you want to try to put that cut in. Uh, I think we just need to go ahead and correct it. So I'll refer you to the previous videos uh, that we've done with this sheet metal part, and you can kind of see the um, um, the strategy going the other way. All right. So since um, I'm fond of telling you that you're the designer, you get to make the decisions. As long as when I fold this up and I take it into the assembly, I see this is still a millimeter part. When you take it into the assembly, it becomes a functional part make good decisions that are manufacturable part for parts that are manufacturable and um, we'll um, we'll work it from there so uh, let's go into I uh, want it to look like the um, the sketch this time so I'll go into the right plane we'll draw just that open profile and I'm looking at the uh, the underside of the geometry, watching out that I don't get those yellow inference lines to go to the yellow boxes and get a perpendicular that I don't really want. So smart dimension of 30. All right. So since this is shown as a vertical, I could do the 90 plus 30 would be 120, or we can use that uh, four-headed arrow. And since I haven't uh, seen that in a little while. When you pick a, an endpoint in the line, you get an, uh, an arrow set that I want to pull off of the vertical, and that's going to act like a center line or a construction line to give me that geometry. All right, so our dimensions on the um, on the sketch are kind of shown floating out in in space here, and so those would be our virtual sharps. Right, so where that comes to a point, the line continues, and then the radius travels through, points up here, and then it travels through, and we can utilize those geometries. But that's really, we're not going to see those until we get into the drawing or start to create detail. So 50 millimeters and 20 millimeters. And I want to make sure that goes linear, so I'm going to stay kind of close to the line until it snaps to linear dimension. And then we'll see, since this is off of the base into the lower corner, we'll see if we can get this to 20 millimeters. Alright, so right now the 50 millimeters in the stretch, I can't really, I just can't get there. Alright, so control Z, we'll get rid of that dimension. I need to send that one back to 20. All right, so that should be able to rotate. So the 83 millimeters, 40, D30, just doing a quick uh, accounting. So pretty close to 83. And then if I wanted to check what that dimension would be, this is where I will use the driven dimension. All right, so I can make that dimension driven and about 14 millimeters difference. So that's, that's quite a, uh, almost, uh, almost 15 millimeters between the dimension and the, uh, the, the result. So one of those has to take priority and we could adjust the 30 degree to get that to 20 and then this number would grow. All right, so there's just so many things. So um, as we go through this part and we refine it, take it to the next level, let it evolve, uh, we'll have to make, uh, we'll have to resolve those issues and make those decisions. All right, so sheet metal, 
we have a material thickness of 5 millimeters again and the inside bend radiuses are 5 millimeters. So as a general rule, if I can keep, especially with like the previous 90 degree bends, if I could keep a 5 millimeter bend radius, inside bend radius, that's going to lessen those stresses and um, you know, dealing with, uh, with that geometry. All right, so our thickness will go mid-plane and 40 millimeters and the thick oh there we go the, the the width of the part the thickness of the part and then we'll go to five millimeters on the bend radius i'm going to keep my k factor and we're going to see that k factor a little more in the drawing that if we were to add up 83 and 50 and 20 uh 70 and 83 is 153 with the k factor we're going to see that number grow um, I believe we're going to see it grow or shrink um, a little bit to uh, to account for those uh, for those stresses. Okay, I'll go ahead and accept it. I'm going to go with the control seven, and then with the, uh, the sketch, we'll put in the um, circle. Um, you know, again, if there's any possibility that these would become threaded holes, um, go to a countersink. I would um, I would put in the uh, the hole wizard items. So at its worst case, I go ahead and create these, and we put them in position. And let's see, we're 12 off of the back. We have eight millimeters in four places. And then 16 millimeter separation. All right, so I make the cut. And oh, it's linked to thickness, so I go ahead and accept. I come back and decide, well, those really need to be um, an M8 by 1.25, or they need to be a countersink clearance for an M6, and it's just a, a loose, uh, loose clearance. I can always come back and delete the feature so that it's not participating and leave the sketch. Come over to the face and go right into the hole wizard and pick up a countersink or the, well, not thick enough for a counter bore, maybe a spot face if we modified it, our threaded, threaded hole location. And we're in metric. We have a five millimeter hole selected. So we're going to scroll down until we get to the eight millimeters. Um, don't really like the near side, far side countersinks unless, um, well, at that point, if it gets big enough to take a countersink, then we would just go over to the uh, to the definition. So I'm picking those points on top of the previous sketch so I can reuse it and have the same geometry and then I'll just go back and hide the sketch. So it's kind of one of those. I generated the geometry. Um, I found I couldn't really use the feature. It doesn't really hurt my feelings to go back and place the, uh, the whole wizard item on top of it. All right, so our location then for the notch instead is we'd probably be sketching out here and cutting through the part. The problem then is that that cut, if we need to make that relief, really isn't going to um, help with our geometry. So instead in previous versions we've made that, that geometry but it is it's going to increase the manufacturing cost. I don't even I don't even think just the, the standard NC turret punch is going to be uh, uh, as an effective um, to produce that angle. So if anything, and, you know, unless it was some kind of guide or really needed to be there, I don't know that uh, don't know that I would fight it. All right, so this isn't in our our point, so. I would probably need the sketch as usual to bring that up to 14 millimeters. But let's just go that way and we'll simplify. All right, so I know that I have an angle issue there because I just pulled it off of the, um, uh, the vertex. Let's go ahead and um, extrude cut. 
only we have uh, have regions. So I think I will take this opportunity. I'm going to cancel out of that and take this opportunity to switch that to a construction line, which is going to make a, a single region. And then when I cut it through, it'll be a link to thickness. We have our geometry. All right, so when I come off of that edge and go up to that uh, vertex, we're at about uh, 11, almost 11 millimeters. So that being the case, and notice that my angle is back. Well, you know, instead of coming parallel to the top plane, it's going back, but this is going to increase the manufacturability. So if you, um, if you drew it like the, um, uh, like our example, like the, uh, the figure, that's okay. I'm just providing an alternate, um, uh, method of, um, of dealing with it. So to find out where that point would be, I'm going to open up a sketch. And why don't we just use the, uh, the point tool. And placing a point along the edge going into the smart dimension. Come up with 14 millimeters. Okay, is the height. Alright, so I kind of got those out of sequence since we're using. I'm going to grab that sketch, left click, hold down, and reorder. And then hopefully what I can do is go back into the, uh, into the sketch. We'll remove the 14 millimeter from uh, the 14 millimeter dimension, and then I'll go back and make those two items coincident. So I've satisfied, satisfied most of the conditions, um, but still there is, we need some resolution as to that geometry going, going parallel. All right, so the end face, this is going to be another one of those. It crosses the angle. We know we're going to have the deformation. So let's do one with and one without. So I open up the sketch. And I'm going to place, and I got a tangency, so my mouse jumped there just a little bit. We'll see if it kept, nope, it didn't keep the tangency. Oh, that's good. All right, so I don't have to, uh, to get rid of it. And we have the 8mm hole. It is um, 12 millimeters off of the edge. And 12 millimeters in. All right, so that's crossing that edge pretty good. And I think it's even going to con conflict into the, the base, but we'll see. All right, so let's go ahead into the extrude cut. And we'll give it the, the link. All right, so it's still that kind of weird deformed geometry. And then uh, I want to go into the flat pattern. So I'm going to hide sketch 11 there. And normally I would rename these, but since this is kind of an experiment anyway, we'll, uh, we'll leave those as their sketch values. Jump back into the sheet metal tab. We're going to unfold the part, give it a fixed face, collect the rest of the bends, of which there should be two. All right, so you can kind of see the deformation in that location. All right, and then come back. We have the eight millimeter by 12 millimeter. By 12 millimeter. All right, so the takeaway is there's still going to be some problems with this part. This is not a, a fully a uh, fully resolved part by any means. So let's go to the extruded cut and link the thickness. All right, so in this plane we have something that's easy to cut. And this is going to be interesting. This is going to be easy to cut instead of having an angle that is kind of floating. Uh, let's, see, let's bring it around a little bit. It would be kind of coming down into the back, so the head would have to tilt. Whatever our cutting tool, the head's going to have to tilt to make that cut. All right, we're going to fold this back up then and collect the bends and accept. And so even though I still get that deformation, you can now compare the two results. Is this going to be enough clearance for whatever we're trying to attach? Obviously, the, um, 
the, the geometry there isn't uh, as clean with the 20 millimeter from the virtual sh sharp. So, yeah, it's um, something's going to have to uh, to take priority, and some decisions are going to have to be made on this one. But we're far enough along to uh, to go and save it. So, um, whatever geometry you got created on this one is going to be acceptable. But just be aware of some of the um, uh, the problems and the uh, the resolutions that we can uh, create in sheet metal.